On December 5th, President Joe Biden gave the American people the ultimate proposition. Speaking before a campaign reception in Weston, Massachusetts, Biden proclaimed, If Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running, but we cannot let him win. Before making this wonderful proclamation, Biden tried calling out Trump as a threat to democracy. Biden cited comments that compared opponents to vermin and reports that alleged the Insurrection Act would be instituted to enact policy changes as he saw fit. Dems also drudged up a December 2022 post on social media where Trump hinted at putting an end to certain parts of the Constitution. Naturally, the group of New England's infamous Blue Bloods lapped it up and opened their pocketbooks. What good little circus poodles they are. With no reporters or cameras there to capture the moment, reporters later surrounded Biden to ask him about the allegations. While Biden owned up to say it with a smug and unearned sense of pride, he also seemed to try and shrug the idea off as a joke, instead inferring that he would be staying with it. Given Trump's head start by announcing following the midterms in November 2022, he gave himself a bit of an advantage over Biden in reaching Americans for the 2024 election. During Biden's delay in announcing he would be running, he kept his distance from the hype surrounding such an idea, seemingly afraid to try and gain any early ground. However, since coming out in 2024, he has ramped up the liberal rhetoric machine. For Joe, the usual players came out to ensure he ended 2023 in style. The Washington Post, The Atlantic, and The New York Times all jumped on board with a dictator comment from former President Trump. They portrayed him as saying he would turn the office into a dictatorship, and not just righting some wrongs over the first 24 hours. It's a dangerous idea, and yet, that's exactly what the media did. Add this misunderstanding to the numerous court cases, and it makes it harder and harder to fully support the idea of Trump 2024 and expect to win this office. While Biden doesn't make much in the way of a formidable opponent, he brings up an interesting idea. What if Trump dropped out? Would Biden take the Pepsi challenge, to use the parlance of our times, and decide to listen to the people and not run in 2024? If he agreed to it, it just might be worth the squeeze. As things sit here in early December, there are still four other candidates besides Trump who are still in the running for the Republican ticket. This means if this situation were to play out, we would have options. While some of these options are difficult to fathom, they all think they bring something special to the GOP ticket. Let's talk about the GOP candidates that aren't Donald Trump for a moment. First up is former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. As a U.S. attorney for the New Jersey court system, he became well-known as someone tough on crime and tougher on criminals. He sought to erase the corruption New Jersey has become well-known for and cracked down on crime harder than almost any other DA in history. In 2009, Christie became governor of New Jersey. From the starting gate, he sought to cut spending, put caps on surging property taxes, as well as help the state rebuild following Hurricane Sandy. Given the unusual trek and strength of the storm, he earned a stellar reputation for being organized, determined, and getting the people of New Jersey to work together. It's an incredibly difficult task given the clashes between unions and special interest groups and how loyal to delayed or closed companies many people were. After a term of being re-elected by a wide margin, he tried running for the 2016 GOP nomination, but ended up dropping out just months into his campaign following a piss-poor showing during the New Hampshire primaries. Putting his support behind Trump, he was given a throwaway position and would then speak out vehemently against Trump following his 2020 election loss. Next up is current Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Born in Florida, he was the prototypical popular kid and was someone everyone knew. Building on that confidence, he pursued a career in law. Cutting his teeth as a Yale and Harvard lawyer, he then turned Navy SEAL legal advisor in 2004, quickly deployed, and upon return, was sent to serve out of uniform on special detail. Returning home, he worked as a special assistant U.S. attorney for the office in the Middle District of Florida. Holding on to that task until he was discharged in 2010, in 2012 DeSantis began his bid for Congress. Earning re-elections in 2014 and 2016, he was a founder of the Freedom Caucus and became a firm ally for President Trump. As Donald ran for president, he and DeSantis strengthened their public bonds, bonds that got even stronger once Trump took office. During the COVID years, DeSantis was world known for doing everything he could to keep the state of Florida open, and many objectively saw it as the brightest beacon of freedom. As people saw masks being optional as a good thing, he allowed local government to make their own decisions. Akin to what President Trump did, he showed the American people that returning to normal was not only safe, but it was incredibly smart. Then, we have Nikki Haley, who was elected to the State House of Representatives in 2004. While there, she worked to lower taxes. While no easy feat in South Carolina, she kept her wits about her and voted against things like cigarette sales taxes, as well as on property that someone resides in and has fully paid off. She also fought for better pay for teachers with extra incentives based on their performance. 
The way she saw things, if people were going to pay taxes, they needed to go to good use. After serving three terms, she stepped out in 2010 after being elected governor. A unique transition, she was the first female governor of South Carolina and the second U.S. of Indian descent, following Bobby Jindal of Louisiana. She set strong immigration laws and rejected Mitt Romney's request that she join him as his vice president and insisted she would always reject any such notions. During her second term, she became what many called a dead duck, as she and her General Assembly became at odds with no likelihood of adjustment or reconciliation. In 2017, she resigned to take over as an ambassador to the UN. Staying just long enough to justify having her name on the door, she left at the end of 2018. Advocating for the Israelites, she guided Trump away from the Iranian nuclear deal and took the U.S. out of the U.N.'s Human Rights Council, something that the Biden administration reversed. All in all, many considered her to be doing little more than occupying a seat after she was unable to be an effective governor. Finally, there's Vivek Ramaswamy. The 38-year-old American entrepreneur is the son of Indian immigrants and founded the incredibly successful pharmaceutical company Roviant Sciences. With a bachelor's in biology from Harvard and a Juris Doctorate from Yale Law School, the man is no slouch and considered to be well-rounded. Stories of his time doing Eminem cover raps, time as an intern for a hedge fund, and a Cincinnati, Ohio upbringing make him quite an interesting person. Unlike the other three Trump alternatives, he has no political career to talk about, and his various sociological and economic achievements are incredible at his age. He's one of the few people to grow up with social media and not have a flurry of tweets or negative statuses come to the surface. He stands in stark contrast to other more seasoned options. While still having the uncorrupted lack of experience and healthy finances like Trump, he doesn't have a number of failed ventures behind him. Just looking at these facts alone, Ramaswamy starts looking like a very viable candidate. If you look deeper, though, you'll see a candidate who learned a lot in school one who has a melting pot of experience with acceptance and membership in various clubs that often attract members of other backgrounds than his own. Simply put, Ramaswamy represents the American people at their very core. The very best features of our boldest and brightest all rolled into one person. At least that's what some say. Others would say he lacks the experience and may not even be a legal citizen considering his parents' background. Moving to call Biden on his bluff would be a bold move. There is no guarantee that whoever the left put up in his place would be a pushover. Still, getting Biden to bow out of the picture while avoiding another four years of liberals trying to challenge the way Trump unfolds his napkin sounds like one hell of a deal for the American people. Of the potential people who could take his place, Ramaswamy may have some of the best characteristics from Trump and far less of the downfalls in the public eye. Then again, literally any of the GOP candidates could be an option. Okay, except for Chris Christie because he gets booed no matter where he goes. Going after any kind of a deal with the devil incarnate, that is the Democratic Party, is already a grave risk. It's one no Republican should take lightly, but to cherry-pick the alternative and avoid another four years of the Biden family raping the country on the American dime, it could be well worth the risk.